Hi, multiplexing was first used in the 1870s. But what is it and how is it used? And the crosstalk on the bus lane looks pretty bad mm, this morning. Yum. So you may have to take an alternate route. Next up on Nick Make FM is... Multiplexing or muxing is a way of reducing the number of expensive wires, cables or RF transmitters by combining several signals over one medium. It was originally used in telegraphy in the 1870s to allow more than one person to communicate at a time and was developed by George Squire in 1910 for the telephone carrier network. The opposite of muxing is demuxing, which is a way of separating all the combined signals at the other end. These days it is used in TV and radio stations, telephone networks, satellite communications. You are even using multiplexing to watch this video, as you are sharing the internet with billions of other users. In electronics, there are three common methods of employing multiplexing. Time, frequency and space. In TDM, signals are combined in the time space by allocating a short fixed time slot where each source signal transmits a few bits or bytes. TDM is used primarily in digital communications, such as the old GSM network, but can also be seen in the old wave audio format, which uses TDM to interleave its stereo channels much like a zipper. With FDM, signals are combined within the frequency space. Every TV and radio channel on the planet uses FDM as it shares the atmosphere when transmitting signals. FDM can also be used in cable television and can be referred to as WDM when talking about fiber optic communications. With SDM, signals are combined within the space space. Space space, hmm. Good examples of this is your landline telephone with its multi-pair wires, a humble I2C bus, an ethernet switch with its many ports, mesh networks such as Zigbee or your wireless access point, which uses phased array antennas to transmit several signals at the same time. There's also several other sub-methods. PDM, which uses light polarization in fiber optics or orthogonal polarization in wireless to transmit two signals simultaneously. It is used primarily in fiber optics, microwave links and satellite communications. CDM is something you have been using for many years and is seen in the humble mobile phone. Yellow, often also yep. referred to oh, as yeah. CDMA, it employs frequency hopping or DSSSS to achieve multiplexing. Whichever method you look at, they all have one common goal, which is to do more with less. When it comes to electronic circuits, there are several semiconductors that use multiplexing. For example, you'll see ICs such as this analog to digital converter that has a single ADC on board as they are expensive to produce, but can measure analog voltages from 16 channels. Or this 16 channel analog switch that you could use to connect to an expensive ADC or DAC. Or this IC that has 16 pins that can be connected to any of another set of 16 pins, also known as a crossbar or cross point switch. Multiplexing is also used in keyboards. Given a standard keyboard layout of 104 keys, you would normally require 104 GPI lines, which would result in a very large IC. So instead, GPIOs are arranged in a matrix and keys placed at every point where X and Y meet. This means that given 6 GPIOs, you can scan 9 keys, 11 GPIOs, 28 keys, and 24 GPIOs for 108 keys. Keyboard ICs will scan across columns within the matrix at a certain rate to determine which key has been pressed. Multiple keys can be pressed within each column and keys pressed in other columns won't affect the result of the current column as they'll be in tri-state mode. There's also another form of keyboard multiplexing which relies on a resistor divider to determine which key or keys have been pressed. Each resistor will be double the previous value thereby ensuring any combination of keys can be pressed. This only requires one GPIO, but it has to be an analog input. Matrix multiplexing is also used in displays with the switches replaced by LEDs at each point. A microcontroller will scan through the matrix lighting up a row at a time. This relies on persistence of vision in the human eye to fool us into thinking all LEDs are lit up at the same time. There is another form of multiplexing display called Charlieplexing. Like keyboard multiplexing, charlieplexing relies heavily on a GPIO pin's ability to drop into tri-state mode. At its basic level, charlieplexing can be used to control two LEDs with only two GPIOs. Setting GPIO 1 to high and GPIO 2 to low will light up LED 1. Setting GPIO 1 to low and GPIO 2 to high will light up LED 2. Setting both GPIOs to tri-state mode will turn both LEDs off. 
The advantages with Charlie Plexing is that you don't need any additional external hardware, but there are a few disadvantages. There are no diagonal LEDs available, so you have to translate X and Y coordinates within software. And LED brightness is much harder to control. Much like dedicated keyboard controllers, you can also buy Charlie Plexing ICs. So as you can see, multiplexing is actually very important within electronics to allow sharing of minimal resources. Don't forget to check out my website article on this topic as I expand out some of the concepts. Thanks for watching and see you next week. And that's it for another episode. Don't forget to check out my website for further details and thanks for watching.